Come and get it. Only two dollars. Come and get it. What's this? Oh, you know how kids set up a neighborhood lemonade stand to try to make a little extra money? Yeah. Well, who says adults can't set up a stand to do the same thing in their neighborhood? Oh, that's a great idea. Thank you. I'll take one. Okay, that'll be two dollars, sir. There you go. All right. And your change is three. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And here we go. What is this? I thought you were selling lemonade. No. It's fish on a stick. Hmm. Yeah. You know, never mind. You can keep the two dollars. Oh. Okay. Why does nobody want you? Hello, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And welcome, welcome to, to the, the So and So, so show. show. Hey, we've been having a good time celebrating the people on our blocks. And trying to make time to care about others. That's right. We. Were you expecting a guest? No, and I guess you weren't either. No. Well, well, these are fun. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Sugar! Sugar! <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, have a seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, it is so good to see you. Is it? Yeah, I thought so. Well, okay, well, of course we know who you are. Yeah, impossible to well, forget. Why, why don't you let everyone else know who you are and what you know? Yeah. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm Sugar tilt -a -whirl. Yes, that's my real name. And I'm a cotton candy vendor for the Thomason Traveling Carnival. <laughs> that's right. I know. So, um... Um, is there a particular reason why you decided to come on the show, or uh, did, you, did you just want to hang out? Which we're totally okay with. It... Well, you know I watched the show. Uh, we oh, did so that, thankful. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been talking about being a good neighbor, mm -hmm. and I got a problem with that. Oh, we you can do. change that. You see, since I work in a traveling carnival, I ain't got no neighbors. Yeah. So you're trying to leave me out or something? No, Never. it's not like that. You see, neighbors and neighborhood doesn't necessarily mean the, the people who live on your same street or anything. It doesn't? No, no, no. no. It, it just means the people you're around. Okay. So for you, it could be the other carnival workers. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean like Bobo the Clown? Oh, or Stinky Sal? Oh, is he another clown? No, he works the Ferris wheel. Oh. Yeah, yes, like them. But, yeah. huh. So I'm supposed to be nice to them? Uh, well, sure, but it's not just about being nice. It's about uh, being a good neighbor. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, helping them out or showing them compassion when they need it. Yeah, or just spending time with them. You know, maybe Stinky Sal just needs somebody to hang out with him and, and perhaps give him a stick of deodorant. <laughs> Why? He smells great. Like peaches. Oh, well, I just, why do you, the, what was his name? Never mind. So is there someone other than Stinky Sal or Bobo the Clown that might need to be shown a little compassion at the carnival? <sighs> Maybe Mary. <sighs> She's new and a little strange. Oh, you think she's strange. <laughs> That's what I said. Okay, okay. Nobody really knows how to act around Mary. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's kind of different. Okay, but Mary is still your neighbor. Yeah. yeah, but some people are just hard to love, you know? <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> I think you should at least try, though. <sighs> Let me go get her so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, is she here? No. If she was here, I wouldn't have to go get her. Yeah, okay, sure, yeah. Go get her, go get her. That's my bad, that's my bad. <laughs> Why 
Why do you keep running? I'm just out? trying to be friendly. Well, quit it. Uh, please welcome someone else who knows stuff. Hello, are you Mary? Uh, uh, come in and have a seat. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, what happened to Sugar? Oh, she's waiting in the truck. One of us has to stay with it because it's filled with frogs for the catapult game. Oh. Tell us who you are and uh, what you know. Oh. My name is Mary Goaround, and I just started working at the carnival as a ticket taker, goat herder, and carousel operator. Wow, you do all that? Yeah. When you're the newbie, you have to do all kinds of jobs so you can learn how the whole carnival works. Oh, it sounds like a lot. Oh, it is. Everyone has been so patient and kind. Even Sugar? Oh, especially Sugar. She's the best. When I first started, I didn't know if I was going to fit in. But Sugar was just so friendly. She took me under her wing and made sure I was comfortable and never felt left out. Are we talking about the same Sugar? Yeah. Why? No, no reason. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's her. We got to get those frogs back. <laughs> it was so nice talking to you both. You know, you should really come to the carnival while we're in town. I know Sugar would love to see you. She thinks you guys are the funniest. <laughs> Bye. She thinks we're funny. Who knew? Yeah, and who knew Sugar would be such a good neighbor? I think Sugar and Mary are the same person. Shh. What, they look exactly It's Bible story time with Kellen. How's it going, guys? Great. Great. Swell. Yeah. You got anything that might help us understand what it means to be a good neighbor? Actually, I might. It's a simple story, but it's pretty clear. Take it away, Kellen. It isn't always easy to know how to be a good neighbor, especially if it's someone we don't know. But the good news is this. Jesus was really good at this. There's a story in the Bible in the book of Mark about a guy named Bartimaeus who was? Wait just a minute. Oh, would you look at that? A talking goat. What can I do for you, goat? I'm Leslie. I'm the goat from the story you're telling. Um, I don't think there is a goat in the story. It was Jericho. A couple thousand years ago, there were goats everywhere. Fine. You're saying... You saw the story I'm telling happen? Sure did. I was standing right next to Bartimaeus. And I was standing on Leslie the Goat when this momentous event happened. Um, who, who was that? It is I, Ferdinand, the most interesting fly in the world. Let's go with it. So, I'm assuming you both knew Bartimaeus. Absolutely, lutely. What you say is correct, my friend. All righty then. So Bartimaeus was blind, meaning he couldn't see. So to survive, his only option at the time was to beg on the side of the street. One day, Jesus and a large group of people happened to be passing right by where Bartimaeus was. When he heard them passing, Bartimaeus started shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That's exactly what he said. Some people in the group told Bartimaeus to be quiet and leave Jesus alone. They, they were quite rude. But that only made Bartimaeus shout louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then the amazing part happened. So true, Kellen. Jesus heard Bartimaeus calling him and he actually stopped. And he told the people around him, to call Bartimaeus over. And Bartimaeus hopped up and went over to Jesus. And when he got there, Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? Can you believe that? I know. Jesus had to have been very busy, but he took time to ask a man he had never met what he could do for him. It was like he'd known him for years. Like he was his neighbor. I know. Jesus had to have been very busy, 
but he took the time to ask a man that he never met what he could do for him. He said, go, your fate has healed you. And all of a sudden, bam, Bartimaeus could see. His vision became as good as mine. I have over 3,000 eyes. That's why I am the most interesting fly in the world. Well, I really do appreciate both of you helping out with this story. It was my pleasure, muchacho. Anytime. What Jesus did for Bartimaeus was amazing, but it wasn't a one-time thing. Jesus was always taking the time to have compassion on people who were overlooked. He treated them like they were neighbors. The end. Jesus really was a good neighbor to people, wasn't he? And they didn't have to live in his neighborhood. Yeah, people at wells, people who were fishing, people up in trees, anybody. Jesus just made the time to care for them. And can you imagine if we all made time for others like that? We could change the world. It would definitely change the world of some people, no doubt. And I think that leads you into today's question. So I'll leave you with that, and I'll see you guys next time. Reveal the question. When has someone made time for you? Well, you always make time for me. I mean, even if it's three o'clock in the morning and I call you because I hear something scratching on the door and it turns out to be my dog. <laughs> or Mr. Lee across the street when we go out to get our mail at the same time we talk for hours. Or Dawn who cleans my teeth. She always listens to everything I say, even when I'm uh, like, uh, uh, I'm not okay. here. Uh, well, I was gonna say Mr. Adams, who's one of my upstairs neighbors. Uh, he's always there if I need a hand or if I need advice or something. You know, it's nice when someone takes a little extra time to really listen to you, isn't it? What? Never mind. We'll see you guys next week for a brand new so-and-so show. No, seriously, what? I'll take one. Right. Fish on a stick. Sword on a stick. A on a stick. Hey. No. Hand on a stick. Gord on a stick. Stick on a stick. R on a stick? Mm. Tater on a stick? Yeah. Did you pay me? <laughs> <laughs>